of the show for today we're talking about the uh, talking about the uh, ability to empower the uh, community politically uh, and uh, representative gilmore has given us some information in reference to some of the political empowerments that are available doing uh, what she does and as a representative in the uh, tennessee general assembly and now uh, reverend walker mm -hmm. uh, will talk about some of the activities that uh, you believe the church can become involved in in terms of giving the people more power, making it more than simply oh, yeah. a Sunday kind of thing oh, yeah. that people go through. Well, first of all, Dr. Haney, let me say that I'm honored to be uh, sitting here with Representative Brenda Gilmore mm -hmm. because she's a truly a trooper in the, uh, in the community. You know, mm -hmm. she's always actively involved in everything. I mean, I'm not talking about some things, but it seems like she's involved in everything that's, that's positive, that's going to be uplifting, that's going to educate and empower people. So I, I'm just honored to be here with you on this, uh, in this setting right here. Uh, in terms of the church's involvement, you know, as a, there's a segment in my church services that I carve out, especially for myself, to talk about things, to talk about issues. And I, it's my time of pastoral reflection. Mm -hmm. and, and the number one thing I always began with is voting and the importance of voting, because I'm, I'm serious. If, if we don't voice our vote, then we have no voice. Mm -hmm. And our vote is our voice. So, and, and in this day and age, there's a lot of, uh, and I can't, I'm not trying to find no good, clean words to say, but there's a lot of ignorance and stupidity that mm -hmm. goes along around in the clergy <clears throat> where you have clergy that are actually encouraging people to not vote. Mm -hmm. Man, Dr. Hayne, that's crazy. That doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be one of those individuals right now that do not have voting rights but because of the fact that I have a felony conviction, mm -hmm. but because of when I got that conviction, I, mm -hmm. I have a right to vote. Mm -hmm. I first started voting while I was incarcerated in the prison mm -hmm. system. But for somebody to suggest that, you know, Christians shouldn't vote, man, that's just totally crazy, you know. You find that there are some people that uh, even suggest that Christians are that people, not only anybody ought yeah. not to vote? You oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not talking about just people saying, I'm talking about people that are in ministry, people that have influence in the lives of other people that those words could carry some weight in terms of people making that decision whether or not to vote or to cast that ballot, and that's crazy. What would be the justification for an individual in, 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 in uh, the clergy, for example, to uh, uh, counsel people not to participate in the political process? You know I, I find it difficult to even come to. There is no justification. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't, you, you can't get it biblically. You know, uh, when, when they needed a replacement for Judas, they voted. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. So you okay. can't you can't get it biblically. So I don't know where they get it from. Mm -hmm. You know, we've always we also encouraged to pray for those who are in authority that we may live a quiet and peaceful life. Mm -hmm. So where that mindset come from, I do not know. I, I, all I do know that it does not make sense. Mm -hmm. And with this crazy stuff about a separation between church and state, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing in our constitution that, that says that, you know, mm -hmm. there's no separation. You know, we have to be involved. Everything that has taken place politically, if you look at our history, especially mm -hmm. the history of, of blacks in America, if you look at our history, everything filtered its, its way through the church. Mm -hmm. You have to realize we honor Martin Luther King. We march in, uh, in memory of what he has done every year that this goes on. But you have to realize the man was a, was a Baptist preacher. Mm -hmm. You know, he pastored a church. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff came through that church that he pastored. So we got to realize that the church has an involvement in this process and we need to get involved. We got we need to make sure our members are, 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 are registered to vote and we got to make sure that they're voting. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that they understand the voting process. We got to make sure that they understand how to read those ballots when they go down there. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure that elderly people are assisted in getting down there. And I tell people in my church all the time, find some elderly people and you know go down there you know you know it's, it's some hoops they gotta go mm -hmm. through go stand in the line it's a long line go stand in the line for them and mm -hmm. when it's time for them to get to the counter mm -hmm. go get go mm -hmm. call them up there and then them take their spot mm -hmm. that way you can help ease that burden that mm -hmm. many of them will face when they're going through that process there are ways to do kind this. of thing that, that they might have too in reference to the uh, whole situation well yeah because you got somebody there with them to you know to mm -hmm. help them along with that process mm -hmm. and then of course when it comes to ex-offenders i tell ex-offenders if you don't have your voting rights then what you need to do go find seven people and help them get registered to vote now mm -hmm. since they took your one vote you mm -hmm. now you got seven, seven more to replace mm -hmm. it with mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you got to do something <laughs> Mm -hmm. I would just say that in the Tennessee General Assembly, we file something like three to four thousand bills each session. 
That's a lot of bills. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very good and some of them are not so good. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually improves the quality of life of all Tennesseans and some of them I feel like it really has a negative impact mm -hmm. on our community. I can think of two silly bills that we passed mm -hmm. last session. Mm -hmm. One is a misdemeanor to have a dog in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we passed the bill that it was uh, it's a misdemeanor if someone has a felony and they have a vicious dog and they walk in with that dog. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can prevent those types of bills, because once you get caught up in the judicial system, then it's just uh, a continuous snowball. Mm -hmm. The only way we can prevent that is by voting mm -hmm. and making sure that you get people in those elected positions that actually care about mm -hmm. the community. It's only about 15% of the people that vote. So let me give you an example. That means if we have 100 people, 15 people are making the decision for the other 85. 15% of the people that vote in the, generally vote in the elections? Or and it's only about 15% 15 that generally vote in elections. That's astounding. That's not very much at all, is 15 it? 15%. 15%. And that means that small number of people are making decisions for all the rest of us. So if you want to actually uh, have a say so, then vote. And then once again, I encourage people, once we get elected, when we go out and vote crazy, call us. Mm -hmm. Call us and say, you know, you voted down that um, vote, what is it, workman's compensation mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. That really affects my husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next time it comes up, I don't want you to vote like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think that we're not approachable, but we care about mm -hmm. votes and we want to get reelected. Mm -hmm. So when you call us on the carpet, we really listen to our constituents. But now, uh, which means that if only 15% of the uh, people are voting, mm -hmm. that uh, I had always, I would have believed that it was the other way around. 85% and 15% who might not vote or might counsel other folks not to vote and et cetera. But you're saying that uh, as a group as... That's right, 15%. Mm -hmm. and, and doing the Metro Council, it was only about 8%. Wow. So I don't know if, um, the vote, if the voter ID had some impact on it or people don't recognize local election as being important, but every election is important. School boards are elections are important, Metro Council elections are important, state and of course federal and our presidential election mm -hmm. that's coming up in November mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. I would say that 2008 election is more important, I mean the 2012 uh, is more election. important than the 2008, 2008 election, election. yes. Yeah. Uh, because we need to make sure that we get people in there that care about middle class people, not just rich people. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so in a real sense, uh, what, what we're saying here is that those individuals who might not participate in the politics really are not doing anything to help empower the community. Is that what we're saying? Well, I would say that they are probably hurting themselves. Okay, let me take this uh, second commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> 